Run Run Shaw was renowned for his love of movies, setting a record of watching nine films a day, 700 a year. When Chua Lam was studying in Japan, he purchased films there for Shaw Brothers. He also worked as a movie executive producer, so he was familiar with Run Run's affinity for films. He could be the most avid film watcher of his century. He watched whenever he had spare time. His office was very close to the film testing room. He came in when he was free. He knew what film was starting and who the projectionist was. If he saw a problem, he'd go and stop the reel and watch the replay. He never stopped. He was a workaholic. The Shaw Brothers movie empire produced more than 1,000 films. But Run Run Shaw admitted not all of them made money. He would burn an unsatisfactory film and he often ordered additional filming. A director made a film. He watched it and if he didn't like it, he ordered a refilming, very often. Refilm, refilm, refilm until Mr. Shaw was satisfied. Happened frequently. Many directors were very scared because refilming was a kind of hellish recollection, a very bad memory to refilm a movie. Come to think of it now, those were lucky people. They had a chance to correct a wrong because those directors used so much money, talent and efforts to support you, to teach you, to make you mature, you could become a director. Amidst ferocious competition in the movie industry in the 1960s, Shaw Brothers hit a trough. Run Run Shaw switched to the burgeoning television industry to build his TV kingdom. Sir made great contributions to showbiz, especially in Hong Kong in that era. For example, in movies, only Shaw Brothers was so successful. Everyone knows how much in vogue Mandarin films were in Hong Kong. When the film industry ebbed, he invested in television, and TVB was the trailblazer of free-to-air TV. Television would not be what it is today if the foundations were not well laid before. At the time, Kevin Lowe was hired from Australia to become TVB's chief engineer. He saw the chance because Hong Kong's TV services lacked a popular free-to-air station. He thought if there were free-to-air services, the industry could develop extensively. It was his vision. <laughs> With his unique vision and against all odds, Run Run Shaw decided to air the TV drama Justice Bao, whose plot was considered dowdy, but it gained very high ratings. <laughs> Usher's decisions were very clear-cut. Decisions must be acted on. Each of us would do that. Justice Bao was like that. He told us one day at a meeting he'd make his own Justice Bao. That was that. Later, Kevin became TVB's non-executive director. He would see Run Run Shaw at board meetings. He didn't expect Run Run to spawn so many great ideas. He had a quotidian obsession with reading many newspapers. I remember I had to get up daily at about 6 a.m. because I knew Asa would call me at 
He thought of many new ideas to discuss with me. So it was very amusing. Our morning talks were much longer than our meetings at the office. Renowned music composer Joseph Ku has crafted the theme song for the popular entertainment program EYT. He met Run Run Shaw earlier on. At the time, he had won a scholarship to study music in the US, but he didn't have enough money to live on and he was worried about his family's livelihood. He had support from Run Run Shaw and his wife. At the time, thanks to Ms. Fong, she introduced me to Mr. Shaw. At the time, I was very scared of him. He seemed so very solemn and quite reticent. He only asked me, since I had a scholarship, did I want to go and study? Of course, I replied, of course. He said he'd arrange it. There were aeroplanes at the time, but flying on one was a big deal. It was near impossible, unlike today, to afford it. It turned out he'd written some letters at the request of the U.S. consulate. The scholarship paid the school fees. I had to have money, at least in the bank, to live over there. It turned out Mr. Shaw wrote a letter guaranteeing my expenses. Of course, I was overjoyed about this stroke of luck. Returning to Hong Kong after completing his studies, he composed and arranged music for Shaw Brothers movies. He also wrote many TV drama theme songs that have become household tunes, including Fatal Irony, Under the Lion Rock, The Bund of Shanghai, and many more. They were the precursors of the Canton pop fad. Very grateful to him. Often when I bumped into him, I hoped to mention my gratitude to him, but he seemed not to want me to say that. Mr. Shaw, I am really grateful to you. Without your help, I don't know where I'd be today. And I wouldn't have composed so many songs. Run Run Shaw spent his life building film and television empires. In his twilight years, he devoted himself to philanthropy, forming the Sir Run Run Shaw Charitable Trust and the Shaw Foundation to develop education and scientific research, as well as to promote culture and the arts. Over the years, Shaw Holdings donated more than 6.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. Some 6,000 schools on the mainland benefited from his largesse. Stephen Chan said someone once suggested that Run Run Shaw himself should cultivate contact on the mainland in order to get TVB programs aired there, but he refused. People in the meeting were hoping that Sir could write a letter to resolve the matter since he had made so much contribution to the mainland and was highly respected there. That would help us break the ice. They may consider the matter sooner and listen to our explanation on how our programs could break into the mainland market. But Sir was unwilling. He felt that his donations were for education only and would not link the two issues together. I think his spirit and action deserve our respect. He was consistent and never asked for anything in return. In 2003, he established the Shaw Prize, dubbed the Nobel of the East. Annually, outstanding scientists in astronomy, life science and medicine, as well as mathematics, were awarded one million US dollars in each category. Many people say they have learned a lot from Run Run Shaw. I, of course, admired him fervently. I feel he was really great, a man who gave selflessly without expecting returns. Remember, our Mr. Run Run Shaw started in the TV business when he was 60 years old and nonetheless became so successful, repeatedly attaining the zenith. So we were really young because when you saw his goal, it didn't matter how old he was. Most important is to have boldness and vision.
He had the stamina of a hero and the heart of a Buddha. You saw he was such an avid philanthropist. And he cared little about fame and fortune. Doing his charitable work in his twilight years, he had gone from showbiz to gradually not caring about making money, but how to spend it in a meaningful way.